Hello and welcome. My name is Frederick and today we're going to talk about making a set of cement barbell plates. So the first question you'd want to, to ask yourself is why make uh, a set of plates to begin with? And there's any number of scenarios where I would argue that making cement plates uh, makes a lot of sense. Maybe you live in a place where there's no good gym close to you, there's no access to a good gym, and so having the possibility of making your own equipment uh, makes a lot of sense in that scenario. It may also be that you can't, you want to buy a regular steel uh, or cast iron plates, but you can't afford them, so you need something to get going with. It may also be that you're not sure whether you want to keep training with a barbell in the long run, so you want a cheaper entry point into training and then uh, take it from there. It may also be that you want to very slowly accumulate equipment and then have, have something that allows you to get, uh, to get going. Uh, or maybe you live in a place temporarily, you know you're not going to stay there very long so you don't want to sink a lot of money into a huge gym that you don't have to dispense with later. So whatever the case may be, cement plates is a way to get going. Um, yeah, so Let's, let's get into the making of the cement plates. All right, so here we have a, a brief overview of the things that we will need to make the plates. Um, obviously, we will need cement, sand, and some small rocks um, and some water. That's the main uh, components of the cement itself. We'll also be adding some PVA glue, and that's just to further strengthen the cement don't have to use PVA, you can forgo it altogether. There's also special uh, additives uh, for cement um, that you can buy. PVA glue is just available and it's relatively cheap. So use that if you want. Then we're going to put the cement into a mold and use what you have access to and you can find or make huge investments on it. Uh, I'm going to try to emulate as much as possible a 5 kilo plate, a 10 kilo plate and a 20 kilo plate. So I try to find uh, molds that fit roughly with, uh, with those, um, those sizes. Uh, inside the mold I have a PVC pipe that I have hot glued to the, to the plastic uh, container. Other note here, as far as you can, see if you can see it here, get plastic containers that are relatively straight on the side that don't go, that's not too concave because that will make for uh, plates that more, more closely resemble uh, normal barbell plates. Um, another note here is the, the PVC pipe that I'm using. It has an inside diameter of around 27 millimeters, which the bar that I'm going to be using it with is 25 and this will allow the plate to fit uh, without, um, without having too much uh, rattle going on. So it fit relatively snugly. Um, the concrete, we are going to enforce it with some metal. So I think it's called rebar or something like this. It's a cheap iron that you can buy in lengths and then you cut it to size. Then we have some metal wire. And then you're going to cut it and you're going to make a little uh, what to call it, like a little metal square that's going to fit inside the, the mold when you have the concrete and that's going to reinforce the concrete as you go. And just to illustrate what, uh, what I'd suggest is this is a sample that I made. And this is a piece of concrete. And then as it was drying, the PVC, I pulled it out. I pulled it out. If you don't pull it out while it's drying, you're not going to be able to remove it. Um, I removed it because if this PVC pipe breaks in the future, um, you have the possibility of just pulling it out and inserting a new one. Where if you don't have a PVC pipe there, then if it cracks or if you forgo PVC pipe entirely and the, the cement cracks, it's going to reduce the longevity of, the, of your plates. It's not absolutely necessary, it's just a feature that allows you to get more longevity out of the, of the plate. So that's what I've opted for. That's it.
Let's get cracking. Ah, final thing. Uh, cooking oil, just to pass inside the, the mold when you put the cement, so that it releases uh, and we don't destroy the mold and we can use them again. So, that's it. Let's get cracking. So, when passing the, the cooking oil inside of the mold, try to get a good spread and also include the, the PVC pipe in the middle, uh, as I'm doing here, and get a decent amount on so the weights will slip. We're making easy. these, uh, the reinforcement that goes into the, um, to the molds can be quite finicky if you try to do, you have the metal wire here, and you try to tie these um, pieces of iron together, it can be quite finicky and it goes all over the place. So I came up with a little uh, device to, to help out with that uh, process, just because I got frustrated trying to do it by hand. Uh, it's literally just a piece of scrap wood that I've cut lengthwise um, a groove. Then I've cut across, again, another groove at 90 degrees. Um, the first groove should be the deepest and it allows for the, um, for the metal here to sit quite deeply. Now, before I put that in, I cut another slit at 45 degrees. That allows the metal wire that we're going to tie together to sit underneath both of them. So I'm going to put this piece of um, things called rebar in place and then on top of that I'm going to put uh, the other. And then that holds everything in place Then you can take this and tie it together. And if you try to do this loosely, it effectively you get an extra piece of hands, and then you can do this. You can also use, I have a set of pliers next to me. So you do this, and if you want, you can kind of get everything nice and tidy. Yeah, just straighten it out a little bit. And there you go. And then you just Pops up. Easy peasy. Now you do the next. So at this point we are going to mix the dry ingredients. I'm using two parts small rocks, one part fine sand and one part cement, which works out to one part cement for three parts of the other ingredients. So you want to, to take your dry ingredients and mix them well before adding your the liquids and that ensures that you'll get a more even distribution and you'll have an easier time um, getting a good getting a good mixture so here I'm mixing the dry ingredients trying to get all the unevenness out and get it distributed evenly here I'm putting some PVA glue I'm not really measuring it per se just going by feel and then slowly adding in the water and you have to do this in stages so you don't put too much water then you get a mixture something like this the next thing is to pour the concrete into the mold try to get it evenly before you put in the metal reinforcement and try to get that into the middle of the, the weight as much as is possible fill with the remainder of the concrete the next thing after this is working working the the concrete and getting rid of the the air and the water that is in the concrete mixture will rise to the to the top so that's what I'm doing here at this point you want to let the concrete mixture sit for about 12 to 24 hours until it settles as it's done here and then you want to extract the PVC pipe at this point um, I'm using a kind of a rotational movement I found that was the easiest way to pull it out Another thing to note is that I left the PVC pipe longer um, than it strictly needed to be for the mold, just so this part would be easier. All right, so about two weeks have uh, transpired since we started this project. The first week it was underwater, then after a week it came out to cure, 
at this point it's cured mostly and has lost most of the weight uh, of the water. It may still lose a little bit, but at this point not very much. It will continue to gain strength as it cures further, but at this point it's good enough to use. I should make a point about the weight. So I was aiming for 5 kilo plates, 10 kilo plates and 20 kilo plates. And I've been consistent, but I've been consistently making them a little bit heavier. So this one's about 6 kilos, the 10 kilo plates about 11, the 20 kilo plates are about 22. So it's about 10, 10% more or less above consistently. So obviously not the end of the world and the plates you buy, when you say you buy a 5 kilo plate, often it's not 5 kilos anyway. So it's something you'll find uh, as a general feature. But it's a little bit more than I wanted to, just putting that out there. The other thing is the surface. Uh, when I'd, I'd made the plates, uh, the surface became a little bit more uneven than I wanted to because I didn't spend enough time, um, I don't know what the word is, polishing or making sure that the pebbles who rises as you, as you set the cement, uh, I didn't uh, polish that properly enough. So that's maybe something that you want to spend a little bit more time on than I did. Um, I did a little bit just like sanding, so like the very worst uh, protrusions got rid of those. Um, still work, so anyway, that's where it's at. The next thing we're going to do is, well I have some, I have some PVC pipe here, which we extracted. I'm going to put it back in. I should make a note here about the height of the PVC pipe. If you can make it a little bit, see I've actually gone a little bit short here, make it a little bit longer than the plate, it will, when you drive it through, it will create a distance. So if you have all the plates together, you have more than one plate, it will create a small distance between the plates so they don't rub against each other and then that will prevent them from degrading. You can avoid that, would be great. Uh, not absolutely necessary, but um, that's it. So let's get to inserting the PVC pipe. All right, so we have our little piece of PVC pipe. It's the, what should we call it, the width of the, the plate. So just insert it will usually go easily enough and you can usually just rotate it in. At some point you'll meet some resistance. Like at this point I can't push it with my hands anymore. Uh, I have a hammer, so I'll just kind of knock it in. If you're at all worried about hitting the cement and damaging it with the hammer, you can take a little piece of, um, of PVC pipe and use as a kind of um, create that distance so you're only hitting the PVC and nothing else. And that's it. You can hear this, it's been driven all the way in. And then if we flip it over, you can see here that the PVC has come through. Uh, one thing I've done on the other plates is I've just run a little knife on the inside groove of the uh, of the PVC to take off this edge. Also makes it easier once you put it on a bar, it, that bevel or edge doesn't catch the bar and it makes it it makes it a little bit easier to put it on. Again, it's not a necessary thing to do. It's just. Uh, easier. And just to recap why I put the PVC in in the first place, uh, if there's wear and tear on the plate, on the, um, on the inside of the PVC, uh, if that breaks, I don't think it will, but if it breaks, you can always replace it with another piece of PVC where if it's the cement, you can't do that. This, you're, you're kind of, you'll have to make a new plate, so we're protecting the cement by having the PVC in place. That's the whole, that's the whole idea. All right. That's it. Let's see the, the plates all together in action. So I calculated that with the concrete weights, uh, they take a little bit more space than the normal weights do. But you should still be able to, even with my bar, it's a little bit shorter than a normal bar, you should still be able to load it up to about 150 kilos. A standard bar would be 200 or even more, so plenty of potential for for most people to get their barbell needs met with concrete weights. All right, so at this point, just some final remarks about the construction process, the things that could have been done 
better and how you might improve on this design. So, the first thing to talk about is the shape. The shape is obviously determined by the mold that you use. And the one thing I would single out as being important is, you see, see if you can see it here, the edge is not completely straight. So if you can find a, some kind of mold that has straight edges, it will give you something more like a weight plate. It will not necessarily be important. If you're not going to do any lifts off the floor, it's actually not important because the plate will not come in contact with the floor. The problem is that if you have a mold that's not with straight edges, it will create an edge and that edge will be the thing that will come in contact with the floor and you run the risk of chipping that edge. So straighter is definitely better in this case. Uh, so keep an eye out for molds that like things you have lying around or you go to a hardware store and you see something that you didn't think would be useful for this um, thing and then it actually has the right shape. So a little bit of creativity will be called for to get the right kind of, the right kind of mold. The other thing I mentioned uh, briefly is the accuracy here wasn't great. Like I was fairly consistent, but it wasn't, I didn't hit the weights that I was intending to. Now, some of it will come down to the materials that you're using. I went by uh, a recipe, so to say that uh, this amount of cement and this amount of uh, small rocks and sand should give this weight. Now, if, if the density of the things that I was working with was different, then it would make sense that I didn't actually arrive at the weight that I wanted to. The better way to do it would obviously be to have some kind of scale and then measure as you go. Um, so if you have that, it's easier. You obviously have to go a little bit uh, heavier because some of the water will be driven off the cement by not by much. I think 10% max is probably more like 3 to 5%. So uh, make of that what you will. It's not necessarily a problem as long as you have weights that uh, plates that match each other and you weigh them at the end anyway you you know what you're working with so it's not it's just being a perfectionist and everything the the last thing is the smoothness i was talking about so i didn't get a smooth completely smooth top surface and that has more to do with what you do at the end of the putting the cement in place whether you go over it with a some kind of spatula or something to make it level. So that's one type of smoothness. The other thing is this little holes here, uh, and that's little air bubbles uh, in the cement. And the more you work the cement, uh, the more those air bubbles get moved out and rises to the surface. Some of it also has to do with, like I went with small rocks in the cement mixture, and it makes it cheaper to do, but also it makes this kind of thing more likely to occur. So if you're really perfectionist, you want completely smooth, working with some type of gravel or coarse sand would be better than working with uh, small rocks. So again, just some things to consider. You could also go with like some kind of filler at the end to make it completely smooth, polish it, and then paint it if you wanted to, and write the number of the weight and all that stuff if you want to. So those are just some considerations of how you could improve the whole design further. Maybe I'll do that myself down the road a bit. I'm happy enough with what it turned out to be and it will serve my purposes well. So hope you got something from this little video. And if you did, consider hitting that little like button or the subscribe button. It would help me out tremendously. And as always, thank you for watching.